part two of my clipper guide with MKS Gen L and TMC 2208s and the print hat from Rec Labs, a purpose-made clipper board. Previously, I made a guide on setting up a special firmware named Clipper. It uses a Raspberry Pi to calculate the kinematics of the 3D printer, leaving the old mainboard as a slave to simply control hardware. The result is very precise to promote control, and that means vastly increased potential printing speeds. Last time out, we added Clipper to a standard Ender 3 board and got it working with a BL Touch. This time around, we'll start with an MKS Gen L with TMC 2208s because that's been highly requested. And after that, we're gonna check out this print hat from Rec Labs, which is a purpose-made 32-bit clipper board. This one was a Patreon request, so let's get this video guide underway. So for this test, I'm running TMC 2208s on XY and Extruder. I had a busted one, therefore I'm not using it on the Z axis. With Marlin firmware, I ran an M122 to verify that everything was connected properly. And I also plugged in a stepper motor to each axis just to ensure that everything was working properly. I then installed this mainboard into my Ender 3 using the wiring diagram from my MKS Gen L guide. And I wired up UART mode as described in my TMC2208 guide, both of these are linked in the description. With everything verified, it was time to turn my attention to Clipper. So previously we followed these installation instructions and fortunately we don't need to do all of that again. We do need to reflash our microcontroller because the standard Ender 3 board is 1284p based and our MKS Gen L has an 18 mega 2560. Therefore we're going to repeat these middle steps to flash the microcontroller code to the MKS Gen L. So there's only one thing we need to change and that's the processor model. And for an MKS Gen L, it's an 18 mega 2560. We can exit and save. As we have a new board, we need to find out our new serial port code. Let's stop Clipper. And then we're gonna copy everything up to device equals. Paste that in. Highlight our device just above, and then right click to paste that into place. And now we can hit enter to flash the device. Finally, we can restart Clipper. Before we go any further, however, we need to update our configuration file. The MKS Gen L is ramps base, and if we come to the example configurations, we can see there's a generic ramps folder here. Now this has all of the correct pin mappings for the MKS Gen L, but if we simply copy and paste everything, we'll lose some of the custom things we've already set up, such as BL Touch, as well as Pressure Advance. So what I propose to do is to come through bit by bit and overwrite the specific lines so they have the correct pin mappings. So these first five lines set the pins as well as the step distance, but we can see that's the same. So let's copy that, highlight the same five lines and then paste over the top. And now we'll move down and continue to do that section by section. In a second, you'll see I have a repeated line in the Z section and that's because I have a BL touch set up. I'm going to delete this line so I only have the correct line remaining. Please see my part one video if you need further explanation on this. So I've done the three pins at the top, but I've left my stepping distance, my nozzle diameter, my filament diameter, and my pressure advance because I know they're correct from the last video. By transferring over all of these pin mappings, our clipper configuration file is now set up for the MKS Gen L with just a few more tweaks needed. One thing that we do need to update for the new board is a new serial port name. When we were flashing the firmware, we had it listed in PuTTY. So we'll switch back to PuTTY, highlight, and then paste into our configuration file the correct USB address. I also decided it was a good idea to swap over the whole board pin section too. Now down the bottom, I have my BL Touch section and I still need to update the pins. And once again, I'm going to pull those from the example ramps file. On an MKS Gen L, we plug the BL Touch into Servo Zero. We can see that servo zero is pin 11, so we simply copy this to our configuration file, keeping the AR and then the pin number format. To get this AR for Arduino pin format working, we need to copy the line pin map Arduino underneath the MCU section. The next step is to set up the 2208 UART mode. You can see I've set it up for X, 
as well as Y, and I've taken this information from the example extras configuration doc. I'll now copy this and set it up for the extruder as well. I'm gonna paste it in underneath the extruder and change it from Y to extruder. Now it wants to know the UART pin and we can get this from our ramps pin file in Marlin. We take the top one, TX, and it's 44. Therefore we rename this one 44. The micro stepping is still 16 times. I've set it to interpolate. We set the current the same way here as we do in Marlin except it's in amps instead of milliamps. So therefore it's zero point whatever your milliamps is. Our sense resistor is the same as Marlin and our stealth chop threshold also works the same as Marlin. If you set it to zero, it won't run in stealth chop at all. We can now save this and restart Clipper. These settings that I've just showed you are the ones that I verified working after some trial and error. And you can see I had some errors earlier on. I had some incorrect pin mappings, but the other thing to make sure you have is 12 or 24 volts supplied to your printer, because without that, UART mode won't connect. We can see that we have a state of ready. So now it's time to do some test homing. Now I had the problem there where the Z and X axis were in reverse. So to fix that, we come to the direction pin and add an exclamation to the front of it, which will invert it. We can now save and reload the configuration. The last piece of the puzzle was the display and I'll have this configuration file linked in the description. No need to copy from the screen. With the MKS Gen L, you need to slice off the tab on the connector and then you can rotate it around 180 degrees, plugging it into expansion three on the LCD and expansion one on the mainboard. And for me, that got everything working the way it was with the factory Ender 3 mainboard. So that's the MKS Gen L out of the way and it is running, but it could do with some optimization. My config file is in the description for free for your reference, so please check it out if you've been having trouble with this combination. Now onto the main event, and this is the print hat from Rec Labs. Because it's purpose made for Clipper, it plugs straight into the Raspberry Pi, no USB cables needed. Let's have a look at the specs and then get it installed. The print hat is by Rec Labs, and it's an all-in-one specific Clipper board. It has a 32-bit processor teamed with TMC2130 stepper motor drivers. And that means when combined with the 32-bit operating software on the Raspberry Pi, an insanely high ceiling for stepping speed. The price of this printing speed potential is 92 euros. And this is on top of the cost of a Raspberry Pi, but you might already have that. Rec Labs also have a GitHub page with some resources and a manual page as well with step-by-step -step tabs to take us through our installation. We have the print hat, we have a Raspberry Pi, so now we need to download the SD card image and the software called Etcher. Etcher looks like this when you open it. It works pretty simply. We simply select our image. We select our target and that's the SD card. And you really need to double check this. Otherwise you can override external hard drives and lose all of your data. After that, we can click flash. We have our success message, which means SD card has been flashed. We're finished with Etcher and we can close it. And our next step is to set up the Wi-Fi. When you reinsert your SD card, there'll be a drive called boot. And we're looking for a file on there called octopiwpasupplicant.txt. We find and uncomment these lines and substitute in our Wi-Fi details. At this point, I chose to assemble the print hat with the Raspberry Pi. The print hat fits on top of the Raspberry Pi, plugging into the end GPIO pins and then you use screws and the spacers to hold everything the correct distance apart. Back on our instructions, we can see that we need to insert a jumper and then power up the Pi for the first time to initialize it. We plug in the jumper on the header pins shown in the diagram, and then we use a nice USB connection to power up our Raspberry Pi. What we're looking for is the green light flashing underneath. We need to wait a couple of minutes until it finishes flashing, and at that stage we can power down the Pi and remove the jumper. After that, we're going to use the diagrams on this page, as well as the linked ones from the datasheet to connect up our printer. Take note that all of the pins on the lower side here are the ones that take the positive, and all the black ones marked ground are the negative. 
Now the plugs on this don't actually match the Ender 3 and you can see if you want it to match perfectly it tells you what mating connectors that you need to buy. As you can see the standard plug just wasn't going to fit in but I had a hack just for this video and that was to use a screwdriver to carefully pry up the plastic connector and then I could plug the connector from the Ender 3 directly onto the exposed header pins. Now this is only a temporary measure for this test. I quite like the power connectors for this board. They've got screw terminals, but then they can be plugged in and out, making them quite convenient. This means that the wires from the 3D printer go into the screw terminals on the male end of the plug, and then it's very easy to insert them and remove them later on. The plugs for the part cooling fan, as well as the thermistors, will plug into place if you remove the base connector. For the end stops, they will plug into the pins without any modification necessary. It wasn't long until I had most of my wiring in place, but my final wiring had a little bit more than this. This diagram is in the description and is the result of my final wiring, including the VL touch. I expected to have to break the trace to put it into 3.3 volt logic, but as I was still powering it from 5 volts, it seemed to be perfectly happy with the 3.3 volt signal coming from input output pin 6. On the Reclabs GitHub, there's also a printable case you need to decide whether you want a fan or no fan and then print parts A and B. The two halves print without support and it seems to be a pretty nicely designed case, but unfortunately, since I was doing my workaround with the pins, the case wouldn't quite fit over them, so I just had to have a fan wedged against it to cool the board. My kit didn't come with any heatsink, so please add your own for the stepper motor drivers. When I powered up the Raspberry Pi, I found that the Octoprint image was a few months old, so I needed to update that immediately. Clipper will give a status of ready, and that's because the board comes with a pre-made configuration file. Most of the pin mappings will be correct, but there's other aspects that you still need to edit to get them correct for your printer. You can see that the TMC2130s are already pre-configured, and there's also a commented outline if you'd like to experiment with sensorless homing. To finalize my configuration, I opened up the one that I had working for the MKS Gen L and I copied over the important parameters. For instance, setting the correct min and max for each axis and that sets the correct size for the printer overall. You also need to set things like the correct step distance for each stepper motor as well as the type of sensor for the heated bed and hot end. Rather than go through all of this step by step that would make for a very long video, you'll find a link to my configuration file in the description that matches the wiring diagram from earlier. After a bit of trial and error, getting the correct configuration in place, finally I was printing again with the new print hat mainboard. The TMC 2130s gave me no issues like the 2208s on the MKS Gen L. This video is definitely a guide and not a test of clipper in this mainboard, but I did print this large Charmander at 120 millimeters per second. The extrusion is very consistent, but as you can see, my direct drive extruder is heavier and therefore there's some ringing consistently found on the print surface. But let me be clear, this is not the fault of the firmware or this main board. So that's another board running with clipper and printing well. Before I give my final thoughts on this print hat, I'd like to reflect on some great comments left on part one of my guide to clipper. Minty Treebore tried out clipper on their aging MKS2. They found it hard to set up from scratch, but they're now producing some of the best calibration prints they've ever seen, and the speed boost is really great for them. That would recommend it for anyone with older hardware looking for an upgrade. Ravi Karan P just quit Clipper because they thought it was too much of a headache. They describe Clipper as being the Linux of 3D printing, while Marlin is like Windows. Finally, Dark Nose Ghost. Clipper is not aimed at those new to 3D printing. Clipper is for those who would like to make their 3D printer the best it can be. Now I agree with all of those comments. Of all the people that use it, they seem to agree that Clipper is a great way to boost your printer's performance and be able to print at really high speed without much reduction in quality. However, when you add features, you will need to be independent in referring to the config extras file, inserting the appropriate code and responding to any errors on reload. Clipper is not for beginners, but if you can master it, you can achieve fantastic results. The print hat is a neat solution to go with Clipper. Some of the docs do need updating, but I found email support was prompt and useful. The lack of easy support for an LCD is a bit of a sticking point for me, but I know you can add TouchUI plugin, and there's a video on that from Chris's basement that I'll link in the description. 
The only other thing is the price, and it's not cheap, but it's always up to each individual to decide if it's enough value for them. Now I've pulled it out of my Ender 3 for now, but I've seen enough value in Clipper and this print hat board that I'm going to install it permanently into one of my 3D printers. I just need to wait for one that can print really fast so I can benefit from all of its features. If you've got any more great comments like the first video on your use of Clipper, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.